Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending the COP28 Japan Pavilion AP Platt Seminar, Advancing Scientific Tools and Synergies for Climate Change Risk Assessment in the Asia Pacific. My name is Yuki Yoshida. I'll be moderating today. Um, and I have a few housekeeping announcements before we begin. For those of you online, thank you for your active inputs through our questionnaire. We will be accept accepting questions during the session via Zoom on the Q&A function. For those of you present, um, we have provided headsets in each of your seats. Uh, this is an open air pavilion, so sometimes the background noise can make it hard to listen to uh, the speakers. Uh, if that's the case, please tune into channel zero. This session will be recorded and the recordings and photos will be posted later on AP Platt, the Asia Pacific Climate Change Adaptation Information Platform. Uh, thank you, the session will begin shortly. So thank you again, everybody, for making your time here at the end of a very eventful uh, COP28. Um, I'd like to start our seminar with the opening remarks from Ms. Ayuko Kobayakawa, Director for International Climate Change Adaptation Planning, Climate Change Adaptation Office of the Global Environmental Bureau, Ministry of Environment of Japan. Ms. Ay Ayuko-san. Thank you for your uh, kind introduction. I'm Ayuko from Ministry of the Environment Government of Japan. And first of all, I would uh, like to express my deepest uh, gratitude to uh, NIS, SCAP, and IGES for organizing this uh, seminar. And I would like also to thank KEI, ADB, and the PCCC, and Bhutan and Moldiv uh, for your uh, participation. And thank you for coming, everyone. So globally, heavy rains and uh, typhoons and flood uh, occurred uh, because of the uh, climate uh, effect. And climate change is expected to cause even more severe and frequent weather disasters. In addition to uh, mitigation, adaptation is extremely important to uh, combat climate change. Since the situation differed from region to region, adaptation measures need to be considered and implemented in line of such a variety of local situations. Impact assessment based on scientific knowledge are important for the consideration of adaptation measures in these local, in these, uh, local regions. In this seminar, uh, Asia Pacific Climate Change Adaptation Information Platform called AP Plat, uh, managed by NIS, provided uh, a lot of information and tools to, uh, for the adaptation in order to improve local adaptation measures, uh, capacity building to use uh, these uh, important tools and the information is very important. So that uh, I know uh, in this seminar uh, that uh, climate change impact assessment tool will be demonstrated. I hope that uh, this seminar will contribute to improving the adaptation capacity of the region by enhancing the ability to utilize such tools. Thank you very much. Just a moment, I'd like to show you this. Okay, uh, my name is Yuji Mastomi from Center for Climate Change Adaptation. Um, uh, before going to the main session, I would like to introduce, I would like to explain the objective and the contents in this seminar. And Yes, this is actually a third time uh, AP Plat seminar at COP, COP 
And then this year we focus on the scientific advanced tools. And first, I would like to introduce one of the very great Japanese invention, which is called Magonote. And you can see that uh, Magonote is like that. And Magonote is used to scratch on the, the pitch point of, on the background. Okay? And that is, yeah, you can imagine, Magonote is very useful and effective and functioning and necessary and sufficient. Perfect tool, I think. So, so, but regarding the adaptation scientific tool, I think, uh, my question is, are there such a perfect scientific tool in adaptation science, adaptation policy or something? So you can see that, now you can see that very short Magonote, there are many. And I feel, I'm always feeling, yes, there are many scientific tools in the world, but uh, many, many short Magonote. And it seems to be useful, but it does not meet the needs of users. I'm feeling always that. So we want to change, we really want to change that situation. And we hope to produce this kind of long magnote, very useful, functioning, effective, uh, sufficient and necessary. Many, many long magnote, right? So I organized this session to share the key point, how to invent such kind of long magonote in adaptation scientific tool through interaction between users and developers and other stakeholders. That is objective of this session. And we have a two, two introductions, one from myself and one from UNSCAP. And after that, we will have a panel discussion and the, we have a two key questions in panel discussion. First one is, uh, what is the gaps? What are gaps and needs? And we will discuss about that. And after that, we will go further and then we will discuss about the next step. So what is action, actionable next steps or concrete next step to advance scientific tool? Okay, that is object of this seminar. Do you understand? <laughs> okay, let's get started. And first presentation is from myself. And Okay, so I, I would like to be more relaxed and please you also be relaxed and please enjoy this session. And yes, first I would like to uh, explain the uh, adapt as a possible climate change adaptation information platform, uh, which is called APPLAT. And yes, again, my name is Yuji Mastomi, but the most important information is birthday. <laughs> Today is my birthday. <laughs> one, one of the most important information. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. And share them on the quiz. Can I go? Just a moment. Okay, so first, I uh, yeah, before going to the introduction of the tool, I would like to explain the, what is APPRAT briefly. APPRAT is a web-based information platform on climate change adaptation, and mainly focusing on the uh, as a Pacific region, but also uh, global. And the most important role of the APPRAT is the bridging between science and stakeholders. So you can see that this is a picture show that bridge. And based on the, we have a three main activities. First one is a tool development, so which we I will explain later. And then scientific information, providing scientific information is also important activity of APPRAT. 
And also capacity development is how to use uh, the scientific information. And that is one of the main activity of EPIPRAT. And we are, uh, EPIPRAT is uh, managed by the three organizations, mainly uh, by the National Institute for Environmental Study, NIS, and the IGES, and the MOEG. So today, I don't have any enough time to explain the, all, all, the, all the function, all page, all tool of EPIPRAT. But, uh, Yes, so please uh, beat it, AP Pratt and access it, AP Pratt and it. so please you can get uh, the a lot of information, wide range of information on climate change adaptation. But uh, I would like to announce that uh, new web page of AP Pratt, uh, which is called the Adaptation Database, was just launched last week. So this is, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, this database is uh, uh, just a database of the case study, good practice, policy information, and the organization engaging in climate adaptation. And and main concept of the this database is this like this: learning from others, good practice is a good practice itself. Is it true? <laughs> I think I believe that yes, learning from other good practice is. It's it, exactly good practice itself. So, so I cannot ex explain the detail of this database, but if you need, if you want, if you, yes, if you need good practice in adaptation science, please visit this web page. So this page provides a wide range of good practice in adaptation science. Okay, so I move on to the main introduction of the main tool and I, in this session, I, in this seminar, I would like to introduce you the one of the main tool of EPIPRAT, which is called Climacast. And as you can see that the main concept of Climacast is climate projection for all people, for all, including experts, including non-experts, mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, my children, your children, and friends, and all people. So, and the most important thing is of Climacast is a quick and easy access to CMIP6. That is the latest future climate projection data set. So by using Climacast, you can very easily, very quickly access to the, the latest future climate projection data set. I will show you actually, but before that, I would like to ask you, do you know future temperature increase in your town? I think you are ex or expert or uh, stakeholder or some yeah uh, expert like uh, in climate change. But do you know, do you understand your future temperature increase in your city or your province? or your country? Yes, I don't know. You don't know, if you don't know. But yes, how do you get such information? If you are an expert, you can download the, the from the, the WMO site and then you can get the uh, climate information in a uh, uh, net city format or something. But my mother cannot do with that, right? So next question, what is the fastest, fastest and easy way to get to latest future climate projection data? Climacast provides such information very quickly and very easily by only two steps, by only two steps. I will show you actual, actually, just a moment. Oh, just a moment. A little bit, yes. Okay, 
Now you can see the front page of Climbcast. And Sanjay san, where are you from? Bangalore. Bangalore. Okay, India. India, India, where is India? And? Bangalore. Just a moment. A little bit. Sometimes it takes a long time, so be relaxed, right? <laughs> that is important. Okay. Sometimes some networking, busy network, and also, I don't know. Oh, should wait. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Again, I would like to ex select India and Bangalore. Where? Uh, which one? Which one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one? Yeah. No, no. No, <laughs> that's correct. Okay, okay, okay. So this is the first step. Just select province, your hometown. And now you can see that CSV download button in green and click. And download. And here is, sorry, a little bit. Very small <laughs> characters, I'm sorry, but this is temperature increase in your city, 1.6 degree temperature increase compared to the, the last century. This is the second step, very easy. Okay, so of course now uh, we said that uh, scenario is a SSP 370, that high, higher uh, emission scenario, but we also, uh, we also can select the climate model. The climate cost include a 10, global climate model. And then now you can see that this one is an average ensemble mean of the 10 DCM models projection. And also we can uh, select variable, uh, as a variable uh, temperature, maximum temperature and minimum temperature and the precipitation. And also you can change the, the, the decade. Now, now we can show that uh, uh, 2051 to 2060, but uh, you also set, you can select uh, to the uh, to the end of this century or on a new century, new uh, decade. So you can select that. How many minutes are left? This is the finish time. Okay. So this is the time. So, <laughs> huh? Sorry? Oh, no, no. Okay, okay. Uh, so I have no, seven times, okay. Okay, seven minutes. And I would like to another function would be uh, crime cost. Again, so now you can see the map mode, map mode. And I, I just show that uh, uh, temperature increase in, uh, in uh, uh, Sanjay San's province. But if you, if, you need, if you need to understand the time series or Temperature change over this decade, this uh, this century. In that case, you can choose chart mode. Now you can see the map mode, but and then again, for example, I select next one. So for example, Bhutan, 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 Bhutan. Yes, Bhutan. I just select Bhutan. 
And then now you can see that many line and red color indicate a higher emission scenario, uh, which is the SSP 585. And the low, uh, blue color indicate a lower emission scenario, SSP 1, 2, 6. And it, this time series show that yeah, time series change uh, in temperature, temperature change. And if you want to remove, if you are interested in only higher temperature scenario, so you can see that now. Okay, and then now you can see the several line. These show that uh, uh, the different uh, climate projection. So if we want to know that only the average like this. So using by this table, so you can select that uh, the line uh, projection which you want to know. Okay, so, and also, as I said, uh, climate cast includes 10 climate GCM. And then you can see that check, 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 check. By checking uh, each GCM, so you can show that the temperature change of each this global climate model projection. And I think, I think, of course, for, for, for projection, I think uh, average or uh, ensemble mean of the 10 GCM is more, more reliable. But this figure shows that uh, different climate models have a different climate projection, right? So I think this is this this show this figure uh, have a big meaning for the education to understand uh, uncertainty of climate projection. Okay, so different climate model show the different climate change, different temperature increase. So you can see that you can see that very large range of the future climate projection in the 2090s. So I think climate cast can be useful for the education, for the kids, or for student, graduate student, and the undergraduate student or something. And also, and also, here is a CSV download button. So by one click. I think uh, change the name. Two. Oh. I don't know. Wait a bit. Sorry. Oh, it's, uh, hmm? Wow. It is difficult to handle. Wow. It's, uh, hmm? <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, a little bit difficult to again. Mm. Yes, save. And this is all data, time series, all data. So you can get this, yeah, a little bit uh, small figures, but uh, from 1981 to, to two, 2100, and the old climate model data, and then this value show that uh, temperature increase. And then, so, Different low show the different global climate model. And then here is uh, SSP 1 to 6, and here is a SSP 245, and here is a SSP 370, and also uh, 585 is included in this one. So by using Climacast, you can get all information, the latest future climate projection in your city, very easy, very quickly, only, as I said, by only two steps. Just select your country, your province, your city, and quick download. And in a, you can get the, that data in a CSV format. So all people, most of people can handle with that. 
And then based on this data, you can make a figure, you can make a, you can analyze this data, and then you can, of course, understand your uh, climate change in your city. So, So I think, yeah, I cannot uh, explain that the detail, more detail of the climate cast, but uh, uh, we uh, we have a tutorial video on climate cast of, on, by YouTube. So if you're interested in climate cast, please visit this one. And also my final question is, yes, as I mentioned, short or long Magonote, right? Is climate cast short or long Magonote? We will discuss about that in the panel discussion. Okay, that's all. Thank you. And next presenter, I would like to invite uh, Mal Maluchi Daisuke san from UNSCAP. And a little bit wait. You want to respond? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Great. 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 Okay. Okay. So, Marichan, please. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Daisuke Marichi. I'm from uh, SCAP Economic uh, and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. Uh, today, I'd like to introduce uh, SCAP Asia Pacific uh, Risk and Resilience Portal. Uh, which I think is another Magonote tool. And I'm just going to show you how uh, that works. Nice. I think, no, I think oh, yeah. I just have to click on it. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. 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 Very quick. Oh, it's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Asia Pacific uh, Risk and Resilience Portal. So, it's in a nutshell, it's basically a portal that assesses risks and their potential impacts. And we actually created a short video on this uh, point. So, I'm just going to let the video explain uh, quickly. Policymakers face a critical dilemma as the world warms rapidly. Urgent adaptation measures are lagging, requiring sustainable solutions. The second generation of the ESCAP Risk and Resilience Portal tackles this challenge by offering precise insights into the region's future using IPCC assessed scenarios and CMIP6 data. It assesses changing hazard risks and their impacts under 1.5 and 2 degrees Celsius warming. The Asia Pacific region is so diverse. Let us begin by taking the perspective of a small island developing state. Using the portal's new features, countries like Papua New Guinea can assess areas at risk and compare the population at risk to tropical cyclones in different scenarios. 
What about an LDC mountain country like Bhutan or Nepal, where hydropower is so important? The portal can inform policymakers from Bhutan and Nepal on the shifting heat wave hazards and their impact on energy capacity, enabling informed decisions for resilient hydropower infrastructure. The portal can also aid middle-income countries like Indonesia by mapping vulnerabilities and analyzing data for overlapping seismic and climate hazards and identify future population and economic vulnerabilities to the intersecting risks. In Central Asia, countries like Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan are facing the impact of slow onset disasters. The portal assists policymakers in navigating and directing investment towards critical infrastructure and vulnerable populations in need. The portal's new SDG Action Tracker enables countries to assess their progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals in disaster and climate resilience. By analyzing social, economic, and environmental indicators, countries can align their national adaptation plans with SDG targets and enhance their resilience efforts. The portal shows what the adaptation costs will be and what to prioritize. As we unveil the second generation of the Asia-Pacific Risk and Resilience Portal, we urge countries throughout the region to seize the moment and harness the platform's capabilities to protect their people and economies. The gateway to a more resilient future is right at your fingertips. Uh, so that was a brief introduction of the portal, but there's a lot of information. So with this limited time, I'm just going to focus on the main functions of the portal. And, but before that, I'm just going to go through uh, quickly the methodology of the portal. So it basically combines hazard information with exposure information to assess potential impacts. And what we mean by hazard information is those disaster-related hazard information like drought, flood, heat wave, a tropical cyclone. Uh, but we use under different climate scenarios, and that's where the, the contribution from NIS kicks in. And we overlay that hazard information with what we call exposure information. Uh, those are population, health facilities, power plants, agriculture production area, et cetera. And I'm just going to get to it uh, very soon. Uh, but when we do this, it's very important to uh, see what data we use. Uh, for this, we rely on all the external uh, data. Uh, so for drought information, for example, we use standardized precipitation index. Uh, when it comes to flood and cyclone, we use uh, global risk assessment atlas risk data platform. Uh, for climate projection data, we use CMIP6 data. Uh, for population data, we use WarPOP. Uh, for power plants, we use our SCAP's own Asia Pacific Energy Portal. And I'm just going to show you how it actually works. So if you look at the left-hand side of the slide, we have image. Uh, this is, uh, we're using flood hazard information. So if you look at the areas with the, uh, the darker color, that's where the hazard risk is higher. And when we say overlay that with exposure information, you can see on your right-hand side, those uh, light blue uh, dots are where the plant, uh, power plants are. And the larger dots indicates that those are the power plants with higher uh, power generation capacity. So if you look at sort of Eastern part of India, for example, there are many power plants with pretty big uh, power generation capacity, which is under a uh, pretty high uh, flat risk. Uh, and you can see that also on the, the West Coast of India, where we have some uh, uh, power plants with high risk of uh, flat. So with this, uh, we here we, keep, uh, we we're going to use the different climate scenarios. Uh, this is where the technology like NIS uh, is developing is very helpful. So if you look at the left-hand side, that's the, the same map that we used. But if you look at the right-hand side, the hazard area is actually increasing in different climate scenarios. So in this, in this case, we're using two degrees increase scenario on the SSP3. So if you look at those power plants in red circle on your right-hand side, those were the power plants that were not included under current climate scenario, but with the two degree increase scenario, those power plants will have higher risk of uh, getting flat. So we can sort of signal through this portal to the policymakers that if you look through the future, those are the, the power plants and areas where uh, priority should be put. 
So uh, we were basically invited to this meeting because we obviously have the cooperation uh, with uh, NIS. Uh, and the what we did exactly, it was actually in Maldives. So what we can do with the portal is that we can customize portal based on the needs and demands from the country. So when it comes to Maldives, uh, it's very different from countries like India, where India is a big country. So when we use climate scenario data from CMIP6, that's typically 100 kilometer resolution, but that resolution is not granular enough for countries like Maldives. So uh, we did some research on how we can downscale potentially the climate projection data, and we realized that NIS has a great capability to do just that. So we started to work with NIS, and what we did is basically this slide. So if you look at the left-hand side, those are less granular data using 100 kilometer resolution. So it's hard to see the difference between those small atoms or atolls, but because we're using more granular uh, five kilometer resolution data, so this is the precipitation data, but we can tell exactly in the different climate scenario, we can see that which atolls and small islands have a larger impact from the precipitation. Uh, if you could go to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, already mentioned, but uh, I think this Maldives case is a quite interesting case study. So for the adaptation database that NIS and AP Plat team has put together, uh, I think there are two case studies on Maldives that has been highlighted. So I really highly encourage you to go to this website and uh, take a look at uh, exactly what we did. Uh, if you could go to the next slide. Want to, yeah. And with this, I'm just gonna quickly go through the portal itself and see how this works. So this is uh, how the portal looks like. And when we go to the data explorer, yeah, so this is the portal. Uh, so just like what we did in India, we can just go to uh, type India and then we get India. So this will zoom into India. And just like we use the flood hazards, we can go to the hazard tab and we can use flood. Then it already shows you uh, the hazard hotspots in terms of flood. So again, those this area and this area has a pretty high uh, hazard risks. And here we can outlay with power plant, for example. Here you can see where the power plants are uh, and see where the high uh, risk hotspots are. And here we can use the climate scenario. So now it's current scenarios from 1995 to 2014, but we can go to two degrees scenario on the SSP3. Here you can see that the area has in, uh, expanded and that included those two power stations and those power stations that were previously not included. Uh, again, here, I think the point is we are ESCAP and E stands for economic. So we deeply care about the economic impact of what that means. So if you could uh, go down a little bit. Here, so those shows the power generation capacity. So if you look at, for example, those two power stations that are now including a risk hotspots, you can sort of tell how many uh, megawatts are at risk. And you can actually see that from the right-hand side table where India, for example, uh, in a current scenario has about 15 gigawatt of uh, power generation capacity in very high risk scenario, uh, very high risk zone. 
But if you change it to two degree scenario on the SSP3, that becomes 23. So that basically has eight gigawatt of power generation capacity on the high risk area. So we deeply care about those economic impacts and basically risk and resilience portal can do just that. Uh, and I will quickly go to Maldives since we talked about it. So here, this is Maldives. Uh, and we can do, for example, flood. And those yellow colors are relatively higher uh, risk of floods. And then we can see under different scenario, the midterm, then those middle area uh, Maldives will have uh, higher precipitation. And then under more extreme scenario, that area sort of expands. And we can again overlay that so due to the downscale data that we receive from NIS, we actually have data at a toll level. So if we uh, go down, um, yeah, we can zoom into specific atolls and uh, populate some of the, like where the education facilities are, energy facilities are, and what happens under different climate scenarios. So this basically allows policymakers really zoom into the areas where they really want to focus, even with the very, at the city or at all level. Again, this will really help us to uh, estimate economic impact and take uh, uh, more preemptive actions against those future uh, climate scenarios. Uh, and the lastly, I really want to focus that we develop portal but that's not the goal itself. That's really the means to get to the goal. So our goal is really to educate and train policymakers so that they can clearly see where the risks are and you know, potentially take actions before those things happen. So we really, in terms of Maldives, we had the very hands-on capacity building. And in January, we are going back to Maldives again, and we will actually have a, a workshop with policymakers who are not necessarily very technically savvy in terms of those things, but those people need to understand what happens on the different climate scenario. So we are going to uh, do that. And we have a distinguished uh, panelist from Bhutan today uh, because we are going to do the similar thing in Bhutan. Bhutan also requires downscale data because they have uh, well different challenges compared to Maldives. So we really do hope that uh, our risk and resistance portal can help in those situations. And we basically stand ready to offer whatever help that we can provide through those portal and also through the capacity building workshops. Uh, so with that, thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Daisuke-san. So now that we've heard from two potential magonotes, we would like to discuss their uh, ability um, in reaching those uh, itchy spots um, through a panel discussion. So if I could invite the panelists to the ground. Um, so First, uh, online, we have from uh, the Maldives, Mr. Ahmed Rashid, Director of Meteorology, Meteorology from the Public Weather Service, Maldives Meteorological Service. Um, Mr. Ahmed, if you could please turn your video on. Uh, and then from Bhutan, we have Mr. Karma, Chief of the Chris Christ Chrysosphere Services Division, National Center for Hy Hydrology and Meteorology. If you could please. Um, and uh, manager of the Pacific Climate Change Center, PCCC, Dr. Ofa Kaizami. Yeah. Dr. Hyungyu Kim, research fellow from the Korea Adaptation Center for Climate Change, Korea Environment Institute. Dr. Noel O'Brien, Director of Climate Change, Climate Change and Sustainable Development Department, the Asia Development Bank. And Dr. Sanjay Srivastava, Chief of the Disaster Risk Reduction Section, UNSCAP. Thank you. So on... Uh, Mr. Ahmed, if you could please turn your video on. Great, thank you. 
Uh, so we'd start, like to start uh, with discussing the gaps it needs uh, in existing scientific tools. And we'd like to start by hearing from, we have basically three user side uh, stakeholders um, on these scientific tools. Uh, if we could start with Mr. Ahmed from the Maldives on commenting on the gaps and needs that you perceive. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts in this forum uh, regarding available uh, scientific tools. As we know, Asia Pacific is the most disaster prone region in the world. And extreme weather events like tropical cyclones, uh, strong winds, swell wave surge, heavy rain, flood and droughts are becoming more frequent and severe due to global warming and associated changes in climate patterns. Our observed climate data indicates that ocean, ocean and atmospheric temperatures are rising at an alarming rate. Current rate of sea level rise is a threat to most of the island nations and low-lying coastal communities and populations in other coming Areas. Along with this, climate change will increase the exposure and vulnerability of the island communities to disaster impacts. Understanding the risk associated with these hazards and identify the risk hotspots would be the most needed for policymakers in developing evidence-based action plans to tackle these issues. Therefore, it is very important that technical capacity of the relevant government institutions and other stakeholders in the country need to be strengthened. We need to get exposed and familiarized with the different techniques of visualization of global climate data sets. We need to know the techniques of downscaling global climate model data sets to local scale applications. We need to know how to handle various geospatial data sets to visualize and what impacts do they have on our community. I believe that the risk and resilience portal and the AP flat and climate cast has been demonstrated earlier, uh, has laid a solid foundation on visualization of some of these global data sets, downscale to local scales. This will serve to identify climate change hotspots under different climate change scenarios. As in government institutions dealing with weather and climate observation and forecasting, we need to provide this information to our policy makers. Uh, thank you for having me, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. That was quite a comprehensive comment. Um, so to add on, uh, Mr. Uh, Karma, if you could uh, comment from Bhutan's perspective. Okay. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, I think uh, what uh, that tool uh, from Nice and Escape uh, showed. This is a multi multi purpose tool, I think. Uh, why I'm saying this, you know, I come from a mountainous country, a small country in the eastern part of the Himalayas, and hydrology, hydrology, hazards related to uh, hydromet is a common phenomena. We, have, we are a place of museums of hydromet hazards, except for the tsunami. But we have a different kind of tsunami from the mountains. That is also a part of tsunami. But uh, what I'm trying to tell here is so far, you have done so many climate projections for the country. And you have also done so many assessment to assess the impact of future climate scenarios in different sectors. And what we have realized is you are spending too much from the resource point of view. Because to downscale a global uh, data set to, to fit into our context, it doesn't come as free. So the, we are a donor-driven uh, economy, actually. So whatever the uh, fund that we get in a country, if you start spending outside for doing this kind of scientific uh, activities, I don't, I don't think this is a viable solution in, in, in the long run. And in that uh, context, I think what NIS and SCAP has done is a, is a marvelous job. I attended so many panel discussions here, and I met so many people, especially from the corporate world, who try to sell the products, you know? Like, this is also a good business. But in fact, 
well, we use a lot of satellite data and satellite data, high resolution satellite data doesn't come free. And these are the situations in the context of climate change and in the context of present world. But I think uh, UN, SCAP, uh, and NIS would really appreciate uh, on developing, coming up and coming up with this kind of tools, uh, which is publicly available uh, through the portal. And I hope that uh, you will customize this um, to fit into more uh, customized nature of a, a country specific. So in that line, uh, I'm quite happy to see these tools. And uh, as uh, the gentleman from the SCAP has already informed that Bhutan is partnering with UN SCAP and I think also with the uh, uh, NIS uh, for the CMIP 6 uh, climate projection for our country. And this will be a very good point to start with, I think. Although I think uh, for the climate projection, to, uh, I understand that there are a lot of uncertainties, even if you do the climate projection for the country, but we need to contextualize that uh, with the ground reality, ground-based data, and all those things. And that also goes similar with the UNSCA portal for the assessment part, which I think uh, uh, the current uh, scenario is all developed based on the global data sets. But uh, once you start uh, working into that uh, with the country, I think the data can be verified and contextualized in the, in, to specific to that country. Uh, it's a tremendous job. I think I'm looking forward to working with the uh, NIS and UNSCAP on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Karma. That was a very encouraging feedback um, in the direction that we're headed. Um, and then if we could also hear from Ofa from the Pacific perspective. Um, thank you very much. Let me first uh, acknowledge um, Nice and uh, for the invitation to uh, to be part of the panel. I also am happy to see you, Chisan, as uh, one of our experts to deliver our capacity building and training um, in the Pacific. So we have partnered with um, with Nice through um, Dr. Yu Chisan um, to basically present on the Climocast tool to our Pacific. I've, um, I'm hearing uh, my two colleagues here loud and clear on the need to downscale, um, the need to contextualize the tool. Um, in my Pacific, um, there are two, there are three main things that I, I would, I mean, I would like to see uh, when we utilize the tool. Um, it has to be country specific, and because we are small island countries, um, it needs to have an integrated approach. And also, um, it needs to be sector specific. Um, in um, in the training and capacity building that I've um, partnered with Yuchi San to deliver in in the Pacific, the one of the key challenge for us in terms of using the tools, there are too many tools. Um, you know, you can get confused of which one is really tailored to um, bring about the. Um, impacts and the and the real time data that are you know that are needed for country specific. That's one. And I've talked to Yuchi San about um, if we are going to venture into utilizing the tool um, for you know for example on informal net net process national adaptation planning. The know how is a challenge. How do our Pacific people? and our expert really utilize the tool. That is, I think, one of the, the key questions. So I've requested Miyuchi um, san to, you know, continue partnering with us in order for him to really explain the tool, you know, to, to, to really detail the tools to the, our planners, to our project designers, to um, our uh, people that are, that are involved in, in, you know, developing of our net processes. I think that is the, the message I, I want to, to share with you on what I see as the gap and needs in terms of utilizing scientific tools um, and contextualizing it into uh, the needs uh, and, and priorities of the, of the Pacific. Thank you. Thank you, Ofa. Uh, so that was a very clear message. We've heard from uh, three 
user side stakeholders. Um, we've heard about need for downscaling, for customization, and then on the bridging between the scientific tools and the users. Um, and here I'd like to share some of the inputs that we've gotten from the online uh, participants. And of course, this was before they've heard um, the presentations on AP Plat and the Resil Resilience Portal. Um, but we do hear some of the same messages being e uh, echoed. Um, oh, sorry, uh, not the next steps, but gaps. Um, we heard about, uh, sorry, coming up. Yes, thank you. Uh, so the first one is is kind of exactly what uh, Opasan said. So the the gap between theory and practice, and then we hear. I won't read all of these uh, inputs, and and thank you for the the people who responded to this uh, questionnaire. Um, but we've heard a lot about you know how do we actually apply and uh, need for guidance on using these tools, actually implementing them. Um, we also hear, of course, about downscaling and the need for. Uh, more finer spatial and temporal resolution um, and integrated assessment. So we, we hear this uh, from our users from different uh, governments in different regions, um, as well as uh, private and NPO, NPO sectors. Um, do our provider side stakeholders here, so Sanjay San, Hyun San, and Ms. Uh, Noel have anything to add in terms of gaps and needs, or should we move on to the next steps? Thank you very much uh, for inviting us as a Asian Development Bank. I, I mean, I think the, the points on coordination and downscaling have also been addressed. I think in many of the coastal areas of East Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia, and of course the Pacific, the question of sea level rise and how it's captured is, is really critical within in this. Um, I think there's been reference to, I, I mean, one is the ownership any of this, if it's going to have influence on planning decision, development decisions, it, there has to be a sense of ownership of the countries. So, and that has to go right up to the political leadership. Cabinet needs to have a buy into it. And I think that's the point that maybe, you know, you, SCAP, you've looked at existing power stations, there's reference to existing assets. But for us, for in, from the perspective of investment, if we're to look at resilient investment at the system level, we have to move away from the consideration of assets. We have to look at areas, we have to look at regions, cities, whole islands in some cases, and we have to take a decision on what will make it resilient. What, what does a resilient future look like? And in some cases that not may not be a transport sector making an investment. It may be a decision that there is actually a much greater need for spatial planning, urban uh, urban uh, planning, and, and future city planning or coastal areas of Bangladesh. It's pulling back. How are the mid-sized towns capable of accepting people? So I think it's really important to start to consider how these tools can be part of that because we have to move from NAPs, they have to become investment pipelines. Uh, where can co governments make the smaller investments? What has to have uh, fully concessional climate finance from GCF, the like? Uh, what can be then provided by MDBs through loan financing, but with some degree of concessionality for adaptation? So I, I think, you know, I think the question is, how when you present these tools and, and more than happy to work with you as we go forward um, uh, over the course of 24 as to how tools could be presented in that way because we want to become much more efficient in the amount of resources and avoid duplication, but, but thanks for that. Thank you, Noel. Uh, that was a, actually a really great segue into talking about the next steps um, needed in bringing um, the tools that we have to actual uh, implementation. Um, so now I'd like to invite the three other speakers um, to comment on actionable next steps. Uh, what can we actually, you know, take away from this session in um, specific steps uh, to be done? Um, maybe if I could start with Hyun Kyu Kim. Um, hi, um, I'm Hyun Kyu Kim from Korea Environment Institute. Um, so uh, first of all, thank you so much for um, giving me a chance to um, 
participate as a panel discusser at this um session. So um that was quite um interesting presentation and also see um like um um so very interesting to to see like those kind of goals. Um so um basically the uh our um institute also has a very similar um scientific tool that try to estimate the vulnerability of the climate change as well as the impact of climate change in South Korea, like on the county level. So um oh, so basically what well, if I share like what we like to do in the future for those tools could be the um good answers for um this question. So what we like to do first is um uh, we try uh, for the um impact assessment model, we try to um integrate in, like different sectors. So like like um currently they um measuring the impact of climate change on the different like six like health or like um labor supply, like six different sectors individually. But um, each sectors can impact each other. So um, we like to combine those sectors and try to um build the um integrated assessment model. So that is gonna be the future of those model. And also the um uh, we try to um get the more detailed resolution. So um currently the um vulnerability assessment model is like basically uh one kilometer by one kilometer by one kilometer. But we try to um uh more pin down the um those resolution and to the uh, like um one hundred meters so um we can really can see like um uh, where is the um which places has more risks and also um for the um vulnerability assessment model like that is called the fast step uh what we like to do is we try to um um we we estimate it the um indicators so um different sectors may have a different um um like characters and features so um basically like like last year or like a two years ago if we do not have data sets for this kind of sectors we were not able to include those data sets but in the future we if we collect more data set and we provide it those data set into that indicator, then that indicator can um, measure the vulnerability of different sectors more detailedly. So that is what we like to do uh, in the future for those kind of sectors. So um, but, um, so uh, I think that um, since we also have those kind of tools and these those have tools, if we like collaborate it and then we can probably like build a more um, great tools. So um, we hope that we will have like collaboration in the future. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so our two institutions do have a partnership. Um, so uh, it's very impressive to hear about the, the, the resolution at which you're working at domestically in Korea. Um, let's go uh, pick up some further next steps. Uh, maybe Sanjay, if you'd like to comment, please. Thank you, Christian. Uh, let me share with you the, what happened in Maldives context again, because that is going to respond to most of the queries that you have read. In, Mon in uh, UN, there was a review of uh, SDGs, uh, especially the midterm review. And the idea, of the trend that was coming is most of these small island developing countries, they are lagging behind. So how to accelerate SDG? in six countries context. This is where Maldives project came, UN SDG fund. Idea is to accelerate climate action that is SDG 13 in Maldives context. So what to do? So the UN system were asked to come out with some very, very specific interventions which could help Maldives to accelerate SDG process in the country. And that is where the needs comes in. The need was what to do. So it is not a disaster risk. It is risk, impact, and policy action. The action which could be accelerated. So what this work did together, the AP Plat, the Climate Class, and uh, the Risk and Resilience Portal, it could narrow down among the range of atolls and islands, 
200 at Olson Islands. It was not possible to use global models, so we came to APPLAT. By that time, we had a fairly good understanding about APPLAT uh, credibility. My colleagues presented about the granularity, but the important part I wanted to bring to your attention is the policy action. This was not just a product. It was a product that was used by government ownership, what my colleague from ADB was talking about. It was a UN support to the government of Maldives. It was built on ADB work in Maldives. They mapped out the land use in different atolls and islands. We used climate scenario in the back of the, map, the land use maps that ADB had generated. Now government has a very specific roadmap. What to do the next? So the, the my final word is, you have a risk which is coming from the AP plat, impact which is coming from AP plat. From ESCAP, what we are doing is impact, we are converting macroeconomic, what will be the impact in terms of GDP, what will be the impact in a particular sector, food system, energy systems, water systems, and then the, the overall impact on the economy and SDG acceleration. So all put together, all the dots connecting, is a big policy solutions that we are providing together. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. So yes, the Maldives case is, is I guess, one success case, um, thanks to the UN support, um, which I guess addresses the, the uh, question of, you know, funding, uh, governments not necessarily having that the resources to, to do that work um, themselves when they need to do the implementation internally. Um, so from the perspective of an investor from the Asian Development Bank, um, no, um, Noel, if you could also comment on some of the next steps that you see necessary bringing these tools forward. Thank you. Um, no, and I, I think this is an excellent opportunity for to have, have this conversation. I mean, I think we would like to see uh, greater action at the platform of actors in, in, in the various regions, whether that be in the Pacific context uh, in Southeast Asia or uh, the Himalaya, the Hindu Kush area, so that there is clarity that we, we are uh, starting to avoid the duplication of, of, of effort. I, I think we, we would really like to see that. And then obviously uh, um, that, that there is, is clarity and, and the governments are clear on, on what is involved in each of these platforms. So there's a level of credibility because I, I, I just want to make one comment. I, I'm, we are hearing from some consulting firms, et cetera, this notion that our AI can be used as a quick win on some of these risk assessments. And, and so we do see that as a concern going forward. And, and so, you know, the need for, for this co kind of coordination, I mean, ADB has been closely working with the with it uh, and in collabor in conjunction with the team at AP Plat, and we'd like to do that further, and I think bring uh, more parties together on, on this on this work, and I think then as in the case of the Maldives to to take further action on how then that is used at at the country's level at the country level. So 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 very much appreciate and and want to work increase that collaboration. Thank you, Noel. Uh, yes, indeed. So we do have a lot of magonotes here, um, and we're already here, starting to hear about potential and ongoing partnerships um, to make sure that we're not uh, duplicating efforts um, to synergize in addressing all these um, uh, outstanding challenges. Um, I'd also like to bring up some of the inputs from the online participants from the questionnaire. We did hear some of the same um, comments being brought up about integrated assessments. Uh, the first one we're talking about uh, integrating it into the wider landscape. I think this links in with, with the comment on um, making sure it syncs with the, with the country's uh, intentions and plans, um, and a lot on the collaboration, um, synergizing, um, and interdisciplinary uh, work. Um, also on, of course, on finance, um, and again, on, on um, on the on bridging the gap between the tools that we have and making sure that the users on ground uh, have the 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 guidance and the access um, to to actually uh, put use to them. Um, so uh, we are running out of time. I hope um, 
this does uh, point some directions in uh, next steps going forward. And of course, I look forward to the continued power, uh, partnerships amongst the, the stakeholders here um, and uh, online. Um, uh, could we close the discussion now with one last round of applause to our discussants? Thank you so much. Well, I, there's something I just I, I should have mentioned before you close, but it's on this question of standards. Each of the countries has standards uh, from, and that's engineering, it's architects, it's universities, etc. And I think if we can quickly start to make this link as how uh, country level investment standards are 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 interconnecting with this. Um, it's a, it's 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 uh, each year I feel we miss it. It's it's a vitally missed piece in the picture. Sorry, and I'm sorry to bring that up. No, thank you. And, and that is a very specific point that it, uh, that's uh, that we can actually work on. Um, so thank you for for pointing that out. Okay. <laughs> and then I'd like to invite Sanjay to close our session today. Uh uh, thank you, Yuki-san. Uh, I will like to close this session from our perspective uh, based on magneto, uh, magnotes, which you started uh, your inspiration of this for this meeting, Mag magnotes. I'm correct. I hope I'm pronouncing correctly right. So magnotes uh, brings everybody together. And I must thank you before I close is uh, uh, AP. Ah, AP Platt, uh, the best which we could find, we did a lot of research because we had to address many countries' requests on SDG acceleration. We did a lot of groundwork to assess the data that were available, and a colleague talked about the standards. Uh, AP Platt, one of the best things as a scientist that we have understood was you have the best fit 10 models. And those 10 models, if you do research, really fits into the context of Maldives, Bhutan, and moving forward, we will be using this for customization in many country contexts. So my applaud for the scientific, uh, a very substantive nature of app -like products and services. This is my expert. Uh, my second point is from ESCAP side, we are going to have a MOA. And this MOA will help us to respond to many country specific demand. Uh, we are going, to, my colleagues uh, informed, in Maldives, we have a very a strong demand for capacity development, how to use downscale model at atolls levels, uh, particularly land use planning, resilient land use planning. Maldives has a legislation, they have the, the, the decentralized the land use to the atolls level. So we will be going together with you uh, to build the capacity of different atolls and islands in Maldives, so that is our next step. Our next is Bhutan. I'm so happy Mr. Krama is here. Uh, we the, This know-how, we will take it in case of Bhutan. Bhutan is more challenging, you can understand. It's a high variability. It's a mountain at 8.5 kilometer altitude to the downstream. So uh, downscaling model to the extent of something which suits Bhutan needs will be a challenge, but this challenge we can manage together. Uh, my final word is we have many partnership uh, uh, support, including what you heard from Korea, from Japan, the financing, linking this to the adaptation finance. We are trying our best in countries like Maldives. It's a part of Maldives NAP process. It is part of now early warning for all. Maldives is one of the pilot country of UN early warning for all. So this is feeding into the UN early warning for all Maldives. It's feeding into the NAP process. We would like this to feed into Maldives five-year uh, development plan. So same model in many other countries. So together, uh, we plan to reach out to the many countries and MOU is one. So this is next actionable step from our side with all partners together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sanjay. So with that, we'd like to close our session. Thank you so much for your presence here. I'm sure it was a very long uh, week, uh, two weeks of COP, and we really appreciate your presence here. Also to our online participants participating from different parts of the globe at different times of the day and night. 
uh, thank you again. Um, and let's keep going on adaptation. Thank you.